there is something between the Pharaoh and Musa that is not explained. You can't explain, you can't explain that thing between Musa and, and the Pharaoh. Even the Pharaoh can't help himself. He kills all the magicians, but he doesn't touch who? Musa. Oh, Allah told Musa, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي A special kind of love was endowed upon you. But even when this man wants to kill you so bad, he can't kill you. And that is, something, that is a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمسينا وأمسى الملك لله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الوقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتعصوا بالحق وتعصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين We praise Allah the creator, the sustainer of the universe. We pray that he bestows endless peace, blessings, salutations and mercy upon the final apostle Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Together with his family members and companions, fought hard to see that Islam spreads into all the four corners of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all. Plus all those that will follow their noble footsteps till the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Uh, we are continuing with our account of Musa alayhi salam. And we were at a point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent Musa to go to meet the Pharaoh. This news scared Musa alayhi salam and he, he gave five reasons as to why he is not going to meet the Pharaoh as to why he is not going to respond to that call. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to his concerns and he caters for the supplication that he makes in Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yassirli Amri wa Hluluqdata Millisani Yafqahu Qawli. So today inshallah we are continuing and we are going to focus on the conversation between Musa alayhi salam and the Pharaoh what happened between the conversation because we realized the real miracle that Musa alayhi salam was going to carry was not his staff that could turn to a snake it wasn't his hand that could turn white but it was really his words that he was going to say because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him and Harun kalla fadhaba bi ayatina both of you go with our signs inna ma'akum mustami'un we are to both of you listening. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was listening, was always hearing to whatever Musa and Harun were going to say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam and Harun, فَأْتِيَا فِرْعَوْنَ فَقُولَا إِنَّا رَسُولُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ You are going to go, both of you, to the Pharaoh, and you are going to tell him that you are messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the first message. I want you to move with me. The first message that Allah is telling Musa and Harun to give the Pharaoh is that both of them are messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, an arsil ma'na bani Israel. You are going to send with us the children of Israel. You are no longer going to oppress them. You are, not, you are no longer going to consider them slaves. You are going to send them with us. All of them. All the children of Israel are going to go with us. So command number one, we are messengers from Allah. Command number two, you are sending with us all the children of Israel. And that was going to mean that they are, go they are no longer going to have the slaves they have been having. And Allah is passing this judgment, this command, that Musa alayhi salam and the Pharaoh, we are going to go out of Egypt with the children of Israel. Because the torture, because the oppression, from the Egyptians towards the Banu Israel had reached its epitome. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it for a fact that the time to end that oppression was now. So he sends Musa, he sends Harun to go to the Pharaoh. I repeat, message number one, to tell the Pharaoh, 
we are messengers from Allah. Message number two, you are sending with us the children of Israel. So as movies are, uh, when Musa alayhi salam and Harun ascend, the next ayah, we are in front of the palace. We are in front of the Pharaoh. So let me try to fill the gap for you. Pharaoh is in his court inside his palace. And now Musa and Harun are marching from the ghetto. They reach the city. Weird hours. The hours where all children of Israel are expected to be working hard. And now Musa alayhi salam is moving through the city together with Harun, this slave, and they march towards the palace. When they reach the gates of the palace, of course, you are entering a high security uh, area. You're not just uh, going to move through to the palace. And what happens is uh, they introduce themselves. And now they are going to say, my name is Musa, his name is Harun, and we are here to see the Pharaoh. You are here to see the Pharaoh, and you don't have security clearance to meet the Pharaoh. Actually, you are a slave, you have no security clearance to meet the Pharaoh. Musa insists, go tell the Pharaoh that Musa is here to see him. There you go, they take the information to the Pharaoh. When they reach the Pharaoh and they, they inform him, Musa is back, Musa is here to see you. And the Pharaoh is like, Musa, he's still alive? Tell him to come in, no problem. Tell him to come in. You know, he has this loving attachment towards Musa. So he tells him, Musa, he, he's not dead yet. Tell him to come in. So Musa alayhi salam is allowed to come in. But together with him is Harun. They move inside slowly and they reach, to, they reach the presence of the Pharaoh. They reach the Pharaoh. What do you expect the Pharaoh is going to say? I expect uh, Musa to be saying, oh yeah, I'm back, please, can you, is my bedroom still the same? I want to go have some sleep. That is the conversation I expect because this has been the home of Musa 10 years ago. And Musa alayhi salam now is in the presence of the Pharaoh and what does he say? I want to talk to the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh allows him, he's in his midst, he's in the presence of the Pharaoh. What does Musa and Harun tell the Pharaoh? Exactly, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, they pass on the two commands to the Pharaoh. Inna Rasulu Rabbil Alameen. We are messengers of the Lord of the world. You can't imagine saying that to the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh considers himself Ana Rabbukum al I am your Lord, the Most High. And now Musa and Harun are coming to him and they are saying, we are the messengers of the real God, actually. We are messengers of the real uh, Rabbul Ala. That offends the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh has been telling people endlessly he is the Lord of the worlds. That was blow number one. Blow number two, an arsil ma'ana bani Israel. You are going to send with us the children of Israel. The second blow. So all the slaves I'm having, you want them. And on top of that, you are not considering me the Lord. What's up, what's up with you, Musa? And now this is one of the biggest threats. You know, uh, I think this is what is called gaslighting in psychology. That when someone comes to you with something logical when someone brings up a logical argument you break him down with an emotional argument and this is what the pharaoh does you know musa alayhi salam has grown up in the palace he has been treated as the prince and musa alayhi salam brings two logical arguments from allah we are messengers from allah and on top of that you're going to send the children of banu israel the children of israel with us the Pharaoh says, Alam nurabika fina walida, didn't we raise you amongst us? Walabista fina min umuri kasinin, and you spend a whole lot of time with us, didn't we take care of you? Just like you would be telling something who does you, someone who does you a favor, something good, and they tell you, what are you telling me? I've raised you all this long, and now is it the time that you are going to tell me what to do? Just like people looked at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you, the young boy, you, you've grown and we've been seeing you. Now how is it that you are going to tell us what to do right now? 
you grew up in our palace you grew up under our care and now you're telling me this now so in other words Musa alayhi salam is being considered ungrateful so the pharaoh wants to direct everything towards gratitude aren't you grateful enough that you're going to at least have some respect for me people here consider me their lord are you just going to march in front of me and you're going to say you are messengers of the true god the true allah alam nurabbika fina wali didn't we take care of you and that's that is something that is emotional that has to have an impact towards musa alayhi salam because musa grew up in this palace musa alayhi salam has been in the care of the people in the palace for the majority of his life and now for 10 years he's not with them and he's coming back he's saying i'm the messenger from the true god the pharaoh goes emotional the pharaoh tells musa didn't we take care of you didn't you live amongst us for a whole lot of your life how many people are in front of the pharaoh how many people who and who musa and harun harun is not considered actually the pharaoh is talking to only who so he, he for this pharaoh he has no time to talk to who harun he's a slave i can talk to him so he 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 attributes his message his information to who to musa alam nur rabbika fina didn't we take care of you didn't we nurture you as in musa wala bista fina min umrika sinin and you grew up in our midst for a whole lot of your life that is point number 1 the concern of the pharaoh musa said two things and the pharaoh is now saying two things number 2 wa fa'alta fa'alataka allati fa'alt wa anta min al-kafirin you did that deed of yours that you did wa anta min al-kafirin and you are among the ungrateful ones what deed is he talking about what deed killing someone this is how the, so the information had already reached who the pharaoh you did your deed so look at look at how intelligent the pharaoh is he is not putting out the deed does the pharaoh know the deed does musa know the deed they are talking about the pharaoh doesn't mention the deed the pharaoh doesn't doesn't say uh, actually you killed someone what the pharaoh wants is i want you to know that i know what you did but if you don't watch out i am about to tell, i'm just about to tell the people what you did i'm just about to tell them because the news was not widespread among the people the news was widespread among the cops and the intelligence the policemen around egypt so the pharaoh is threatening musa that if you do not stop whatever message you've come with وَفَعَلْتَ فَعَلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ you did, you commit you did that deed that you did so the pharaoh is not putting out the actual deed he wants Musa alayhi salam to come to a realization of the deed that he did and actually he would stop whatever message he is saying you see if someone has done you a favor and someone knows a crime that you did that someone will you know what they call blackmail he'll have you in their hands they are free to make you do whatever they want because they have advantage over you that they have taken care of you and on top of that they know a crime that you have committed so musa alayhi salam he has been taken to the hands of the pharaoh you remember what musa was afraid of i'm afraid of this man is going to be so intelligent this man is going to use his words he's going to manipulate me wa yadiqu sadri wa la yantaliqu lisani my chest is going to grow narrow and my i'm going to fail to speak because actually if someone who has taken care of you if someone who knows a crime against you says those words you are done not so imagine someone leave alone someone who has taken care of you someone who knows a crime that you did and he knows that crime Whenever you're about to do something and he just looks at you and he knows you did this crime and he knows the crime he will make you do things that he wants he'll always blackmail you because he has something against you so this is what the pharaoh is doing Firaun is telling Musa alayhi salam wa fa'alta fa'alatak you did that deed of yours and actually you are ungrateful 
You are ungrateful because I took care of you when you are still young. You are ungrateful because you are not even grateful that I knew the crime you committed and I'm not telling it to people. I'm not imprisoning you because we wouldn't be having this discussion. You must have been in prison as we speak. Or for the least killed. But I have been lenient even with that and you are here bringing me that information of yours of alta fa'alata kallati fa'alta wa anta min al-kafirin. What is Musa supposed to say next? It appears as though Musa is on the wall. He has been pressed. Qala fa'altuha. I did it. Musa, remember when Allah said kalla? Allah said not at all. Your chest is not going to grow narrow and your tongue is not going to be twisted. Your words are going to be clear. Everything of yours is going to be clear. Musa alayhi salam is now confident. Remember he has his comfort machine. Who is the comfort machine of Musa? Harun. And Musa is saying, "Naam fa'altu ha." Actually I did it. So Musa is also not spilling it out. Musa is not saying, "Actually I killed him." No. Musa is also saying, "I did it." And he wants to throw back confidence to Firaun that I don't want you to hold me against something I did. And Musa is now confident and he's saying, I did it. فَعَلْتُهَا إِذَنْ وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِينَ I did it. And if you want to consider me uh, someone who was astray, yes, I did it. And that put me amongst those people who are astray. So I don't want you to hold me accountable for that. You see, when someone is telling you something that is supposed to take you back to Allah, you see, you see some, uh, we usually know people too far that what they are now is not what they were 15 years ago. Maybe the same person who is trying to call you towards Allah is the same person who was clubbing with you 15 years ago. Same person who would... Uh, you, you, you were doing filthy things with them 15 years ago. And at this time, they are the same people calling you to Allah. And as they are calling you to Allah, you are manipulating them. And you are like, <laughs> you... You are the one now telling me to pray five times a day. You, you, have you forgotten that we used to go to the club together? Now you are telling me that? So since they have a crime against Musa, the Pharaoh is, using to, is trying to use the crime Musa committed to intimidate him, to manipulate him, to blackmail him. But Musa is not accepting that. Musa is saying, yes, I did that. Fa'altuha. Ithan wa ana min al I don't want you to use that against me. What I'm telling you now has nothing to do with what I did 10 years ago. Fa'altuha. Yes, I did it. Yes, I used to club with you. Yes, I used to do filthy things with you. But this is a new me. It, whatever I did 10 years ago, whatever I did 15 years ago, has nothing to do with the information I'm bringing to you now. If I'm reminding you, Salah, how is that connected to my clubbing 15 years ago? If, I, if, I'm, if, if I'm telling you to at least come closer to God with some good acts of charity, with some good acts superiority, maybe I'm telling you to fast Monday and Thursday, you're not supposed to look at what I did 15 years ago. You're not supposed to look at the crime I did. They, they're not connected. This is a different me. I'm trying to, to tell you something that is going to put you close to Allah. I'm not saying that I didn't do it. Actually, I did it. I did it, and I was amongst the Abdalin, meaning I'm now changed. I made Tawbah, and Allah did what? Forgave me. You're not supposed to, to bring that up. Hold on. What was the message Musa came with? You remember the two things? Inna Rasulu Rabbil Alameen. We are messengers from the true God, from the true Allah. And you're going to send with us the children of Israel. When, when Firauna talks, does he talk anything to respond to what Musa said? Does he say anything to respond to what Musa said? He says nothing. He decides to emotionally attack Musa. We took care of you. That is an emotional attack to silence Musa. And on top of that, you, you did that crime of yours, that deed of yours that you did. That is emotional attack. So Musa is presenting a logical argument, and the Pharaoh is, a, is presenting... An emotional argument to silence Musa. Look at what Musa says. Fa'altuha. I did it. Wa ana min al-dhalin. I was among those who were astray. Fa'farartu minkum lamma khiftukum. I ran away from you when I feared you. 
I ran away from you guys because you were going to kill me and that was unfair. That was unfair. لما خفتكم فوهب لي ربي حكما. الله سبحانه وتعالى the true God that I'm talking about he gifted me sound judgment. وجعلني من المرسلين and he made me a messenger. I don't want you to forget that I told you in a rasulu rabbil alamin. He made me he made me amongst the messengers. Musa is trying to bring back his first argument. He made me amongst the messengers, so I am here as a messenger of the true Allah, the true God. So Musa decides to respond to what the Pharaoh has said. The first thing Musa does, he reminds the Pharaoh of the message from Allah. And the second thing Musa does, he responds to whatever the Pharaoh has said. So he says, "What ill can your matum tamunuha alayya and abadta bani Israel?" That favor of yours that you you talked about, that you did for me, that caring for me as I was still young, is that a favor you did for me and abadta bani Israel? Is that the reason as to why you are enslaving the children of Israel? Is it because you gave me a favor? that the banu israel were now qualified to become your slaves what was musa's second message an arsil ma'ana bani israel send with us the children of israel so through the response of musa towards the pharaoh he is bringing back up the message so musa is not going off track musa is not accepting to be intimidated by the pharaoh he responds to the pharaoh by bringing back the message wa ja'alani min al-mursalin he made me a messenger I don't want you to forget I'm a messenger of Allah. And on top of that, those favors you're making mention of, are they the reason as to why you enslaved the children of Israel? وتلك نعمه تمنها علي ان عبدت بني اسرائيل. Now we expected Musa to be on the wall. Guess who is on the wall? The Pharaoh is on the wall. Because he has been silenced. Musa is straight to the point. Now Musa decides the Pharaoh decides to break down the god of Musa he says wama rabbul alamin what is rabbul alamin what is supposed to be said who is rabbul alamin firaun says what is rabbul alamin what is the rabbul alamin what is the lord of the worlds that you say the pharaoh somewhere in the quran allah quotes him he says as of you people he tells his people I don't know of any god other than me. So when I've looked around for gods but uh, actually I've seen only myself for you. So when Musa brings in the true god he's like wa ma rabbul alamin. What is that rabbul rabbul alamin you're talking about? That is not me. The one who has sent you. Musa says rabbus samawati wal ard the lord of the heavens and the earth wa ma bainahuma and whatever is in between them in kuntum muqinin if you are people who seek to be convinced if you you are people who seek for yaqeen conviction in kuntum muqinin students of arabic in kuntum that is antum how many people is musa talking to the whole gathering the whole parliament the pharaoh was talking to Musa alone Musa i mean Harun was not recognized in the speech of the pharaoh and guess what Musa is doing Musa is saying when the pharaoh asks wa ma rabbul alamin Musa says actually rabbu samawati wal ard the lord of the heavens and the earth wa ma bainahuma and whatever is in between them in kuntum muqinin if all of you seek to be convinced so musa is not addressing his message to only the pharaoh he is talking to everyone in the court and that would be a very great crime against the pharaoh we expect you when you are, you are talking in the presence of a head of state You're not supposed to take your attention to anyone else. You're supposed to talk to who? The president himself, the head of state. And now the head of state is talking to you and you are sending your information, you're sending your message 
to everyone in kuntu muqinin you're not even considering him you're not considering him as as a unique audience you're considering him amongst everyone in kuntu muqinin if you seek to be convinced all of you and that was an attack so what musa says what what the pharaoh says qala liman hawlahu wa la tastami'un he says to whoever was close to him whoever was around him ala tastami'un <laughs> did you just hear what he said did you just in other words bia yugira temuri chi temuri makul did you hear what he said he, he was laughing and jiggling he, he he was not considering whatever musa was saying sensible musa is not going to allow to be silenced with the gaslighting of the pharaoh Musa is going to stick to the point. Qala rabbukum wa rabbu aba'ikum al-awwalin. Yo Lord and the Lord of your forefathers, all of them. He's not only talking to Musa to the Pharaoh, he's still talking to everyone. And he wants to he wants everyone to be bringing a question to to their heads. The Pharaoh can't be God because he has a father. He wasn't here before. Rabbukum your lord you yourselves wa rabbu abaikum alawwalin and the lord of your forefathers the father of the pharaoh inclusive and the fathers the great grandfathers of the pharaoh inclusive so Musa is not only attacking the pharaoh but he is attacking his kingdom he is attacking his lordship because the the pharaoh had established himself as the lord of everyone ana rabbukum alaala And how Musa is attacking not only his reputation as the pharaoh he's attacking his lordship he's attacking his kingdom do you think the pharaoh is going to accept that so he says qal inna rasulakum so when he told them ala tastami'un aren't you hearing what he's saying all of them were quiet you see because it means that even them were not happy with what the pharaoh was doing they are not happy with how the pharaoh was treating them so when they find this one opportunity when one man is brave enough to squeeze the pharaoh they are going to be quiet they are going to be quiet so the pharaoh looks at these people as if they are trying to be taken up by the words of musa so he says inna rasulakum alladhi ursila ilaykum la majnun the messenger that has been <laughs> the messenger that has been sent to you is a majnun is a mad one he is mad that has always been the argument of people who have failed to bring up reasonable arguments same apply to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when people fail to come up with reasonable arguments to counter argue what the prophet was bringing they called him a majnun they called him a witch they called him a magician they called him a soothsayer same thing began long time ago the pharaoh called musa a majnun Who is with Musa? Harun. Harun has been sidelined in the speech of Musa, in the speech of the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh has been sidelined in the speech of Musa. He is Majnun. Musa is not going to allow to be taken down by the words of the Pharaoh. He sticks to the point. Rabbul Mashriq wal Maghrib the lord of the east and the west wa ma bainahuma and whatever is in between the east and the west in kuntum ta'qilun if you really understand it that's so tough that's so hard that's so hard on not only the pharaoh but everyone around if you are people of intellect he is the lord of the east and the west if you really use your brain, if you are people of intellect The Lord that sent me is the Lord of the east and the west and whatever is in between if you're really people of understanding. Oh, so tough. Now, uh Moses has crossed his limits, that's all. Moses has gone beyond his limits. And the Pharaoh now is not going to allow that. The Pharaoh has had a loving stand towards Moses. But now Moses is crossing his limits. Guess what the Pharaoh says next? Allah quotes. La in ittakhadta ilahan ghayri. Now Musa I'm serious now. We've been joking. La in ittakhadta ilahan ghayri. 
if you come up with any god other than me la aj'alannaka min al-masjudin i'm going to imprison you i'm going to imprison you if you get if you get any other god that is not me i'm going to imprison you to vem byo kusaga musa kati ndi serious i'm going to imprison nienda kusiba and what happens is that uh, musa realizes abada kozatia abada chisusiza muko this one is a big man and uh, allah had told him and harun wa qula lahu qawla layn speak to him nicely so musa realizes he might have all gone beyond with his arguments so he says awalau jitoka bi shay'in mubin so are you going to imprison me even when i bring you something very clear like a miracle Musa decides to emotionally attack the pharaoh because Musa knew he had an upper hand when it comes to emotional attachment with the pharaoh so he decides to say are you sure you're going to imprison me awala uji tuka bi shay'in mubin what if i bring you something clear something like a miracle something clear something that can be seen so whatever Musa was saying were words not so Remember when Allah was saying linuria kamin ayatina alkubra we are giving you the staff that could turn into a snake and we are giving you the hand that could become white we are giving you all that linuria kamin ayatina alkubra that we introduce you to our big signs when he was sending Musa and Harun he said both of you go to the pharaoh inna ma'akum mustami'un we are listening to both of you so it meant that the biggest miracle that Musa alayhi salam and Harun we are going to present to the pharaoh where words and we have seen how words have tormented the pharaoh Musa has just spoken words and the pharaoh is like please i'm now going to imprison you you're going beyond your limits so when Musa realizes that he says even when i bring you a miracle now the pharaoh the pharaoh realizes that if, if they are not words yes i can accept But as for your words if you don't stop I'm going to imprison you. So the pharaoh says fa'ti bihi in kunta min as-sadiqin. If you are among these people who speak the truth, if you are among the truthful ones, bring it on. Bring that miracle that you're talking, bring that clear thing that you are saying. Bring it on. We want to see it. Because he knows if it is not words then he is safe. He has realized this man has strong emotional intelligence he's not going to be easily broken down by just the words i say by by me emotionally attacking him so he says if it is something that you're not going to say something that you're going to show bring it on fa'ti bihi in kunta min as-sadiqin of course you know the miracles musa has fa'alqa 'asahu fa'idha hiya thu'banun mubin he threw his staff and this staff became a big snake that was mubin that was evident everyone who was in the court everyone who was in this parliament was able to see this snake big and clear mubin remember the description of the the snake we talked of it was a python and at the same time a cobra and it has a devilish appearance this like i told you when when a cobra is about to take its prey it is not moving it is static ready to take its prey down but this one it wa- it had that cobra thing at the same time it had a python thing it was big enough it could swallow you no know, python swallow and everything and at the same time it is devilish its appearance is scary alqa asahu fa idha hiya thu'ban mubin it is a big and massive gigantic snake wa naza'a yadahu fa idha hiya bayda'u lin nadhirin and he put his hand in the pockets he puts out the hand the hand is white everyone who is seeing is seeing white and an nadhirin uh, is not just people who are watching an nadhirin is not just people who are seeing you know seeing in someone who is scared they would uh open their eyes wide they are that is a nazirin 
they, whatever they are seeing right now has not has not been seen before the snake that turns the, the stuff that turns to a snake the hand that is white and the light is not affecting them min ghairi so allah described that min ghairi so does musa have anything to do with that he actually doesn't <clears throat> so he said i just called him majnun i just called him mad qala li malai hawlahu he talked to the mala to the close people around him to the ministers around him inna hadha la sahirun alim i thought it was just something small but the, he is he's a knowledgeable sorcerer he's a knowledgeable magician he knows his magic <laughs> how musa how did you pull that off your magic is so You hold a PhD in magic? Wow. The Pharaoh has no argument against what Musa is saying, apart from calling him a magician, apart from calling him a sorcerer. Now, he realizes if he doesn't stop Musa, Musa is going to take his ministers too. Because the arguments of Musa are proving to be stronger and stronger. So what he does, he turns to his mala, to his ministers, to his closest people. He doesn't want them to be taken by the this man, Musa, the magician. He calls him the magician. And he says, "Yuridu ay yukhrijakum min ardikum." He wants to take you out of your land. He wants to take you out of your land. That is why he is here. "Yuridu ay yukhrijakum min ardikum bisihrihi." with his magic so he wants to create a force against who against Musa he's showing his people that Musa is here to take you out of your land bisihrihi famadha ta'murun what do you think we should do for the first time in all of his tyranny Musa i mean the pharaoh is consulting the pharaoh is consulting the pharaoh is a dictator The Pharaoh does not consult anyone. And for this one time when he realizes this young man is going to overthrow him, you remember the dream that he had long time ago that a young man a young man is going to be born and he's going to overthrow you. The dream is becoming clear and clear. And he realizes if he doesn't create a force against this young man, he's going to overthrow him. Mada ta'murun tukoletu tiakati. For the first time he's asking to koletu tia In all of his regime he has never asked that. He has never consulted his people upon what to do. And for the first time he is monarchy. His kingdom, his lordship is at stake and now he's asking his ministers what to do. Mother ta'murun. So they decide to do something. Qalu arji wa akhahu. Let him be. Contain them somewhere. Give them a little respite. Don't take them out. Arji wa akhahu plus his brother too. So the mala, the people around recognize who? Harun, the brother. Harun who has been sidelined through all the Pharaoh's conversations has been again brought up by who? By the mala, by the ministers. Arji wa akhahu wa ba'ath fil madaini hashirin. Send people towards the towns. send people to the different towns around ya'tuka bi kulli saharin alim you said he is magician send people to different towns and they will bring you bi kulli saharin alim knowledgeable magicians he is magician bring magicians so the ministers the members of parliament are suggesting something that could counter argue what Musa has brought so even this piece of advice doesn't come from the pharaoh because the pharaoh has been dumbfounded he has no reasonable argument to take down Musa whatever he is bringing Musa is just putting it away so when he seeks for consultation they give him some advice and this advice appeared to be working for the pharaoh so never underestimate the power of consultation Okay the end game was even the advice they gave him wouldn't work out in the end but at least when he consulted he got an argument against Musa you get 
the, the arguments previously were no arguments and Musa was breaking them down one by one when he consulted they gave him an argument that you could say it was reasonable a bit Musa was called a magician and they said if that is the case bring magicians from the different towns around knowledgeable magicians and Musa called him a sahir the minister says we are going to get you sahar a sahar is different from a sahir uh someone who eats eats is called uh, akilun that one is someone who eats but when someone says akalun that one who that is the person who eats in hyperbolic form he, he eats beyond reasonable so a sahir is a magician but a sahar is a magician a magician he has two phd's in magic that is a sahar and he is a alim those magicians we are going to get have two phd's in magic and they know what they do fajmi'a as-saharatu li miqati yawmin ma'lum and this is what musa has been wanting all along musa came to the palace allah sent him to who allah sent musa to who to the pharaoh has musa's speech been directed to the pharaoh or to everyone in the court everyone in the court has been the audience to the words of musa musa wanted this why fajumi as-saharatu li miqati yawmin ma'lum all the magicians from around the towns were collected and brought together to the presence of the pharaoh wa qila lin nas hal antum mujtami'un see just like the mc could be saying uh, mic check 1212 okay this mc was like hal antum mujtami'un are you all steady the show is about to go down the the, the small magician versus the big magicians are you ready the show is about to go down and the people are like yeah we are ready la'allana nattabi'u as-saharata in kanu humul ghalibin if those magicians that you have brought if they emerge the winners we are going to follow them we are going to follow the religion of the pharaoh we are going to consider the pharaoh the god if those magicians turn out to be the winners so people are now picking sides they say we are going to follow the pharaoh if these magicians emerge the winners فلما جاء السحرة when the magicians came to the presence of the pharaoh قالوا لفرعون they told the pharaoh أئن لنا لأجرا إن كنا نحن الغالبين if we win this show if we win this battle do we have some honorable position do we have some gifts that you're going to give us if we win this battle actually for us we know you are not god but if we do win this battle for you do you have any special place for us قال نعم he said yes the pharaoh is desperate the pharaoh is desperate for every point of hope that could silence Musa the pharaoh is desperate for it he says now wa innakum idhan lamin almuqarrabin and not only that i'm not only going to give you gifts i'm also going to put you among the closest people because i have i would have realized that you are the people who are supposed to be near me that any threat to my kingdom whenever it comes i use you to silence that, to silence that threat you are you are going to be put among the almuqarrabin the closest people to to me actually you're going to be substitute to all these ministers because they didn't help me i'm going to put you among the closest people to me so they come to the showroom the show ground whenever where everything is going to be so it, we are not now in the palace we are in the stadium okay see just like a world cup final the stadium where it's going to take place the show a lot of the stadium is full everyone is watching so the two teams move in Musa comes in and Harun with his staff and the magician the lineup of the magicians i don't know how many they were maybe they were 100 they move in so you see we even in a football match someone will start the match okay one of the two teams will begin qala lahum musa so musa talks to the magicians he tells them 
alquma antum mulqun you came to throw so musa already knows what is going to happen they came to throw something alquma antum mulqun throw whatever you're going to throw so they had some ropes they had some some few few clothes to to magic magic people fa alqaw hibalahum wa isiyahum they threw down their ropes and their staffs they also had staffs okay so they threw the staff they threw the ropes wa qalu bi izzati fir'aun with the glory of the pharaoh in the name of the pharaoh inna la nahnu al ghalibun we are going to emerge the winners so they, they they spread magic in front of the eyes of the people and it appeared as though the staff has turned to a snake and the ropes have turned to, it was all magic they don't, the, the real staffs don't turn to snakes and the real ropes never turn to snakes but saharu ayun nas they bewitched the eyes of the people they made it appear as though that is what you so they they make magic to your eyes so you convince yourself as if what you're saying is reality but guess who is not going to be taken by that Moses because he has his ultimate and unstoppable conviction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what he says what Moses does fa alqa Moses asahu Moses throws his staff fa idha hiya talqafu ma ya'fikun and it was swallowing whatever they had forged whatever lies they had come up with the staff of Moses the snake that has come out was swallowing each one of them one by one you see how this team uh, the up the team that could have the upper hand begins the game and the game is now one nil okay the first minute one nil and all of a sudden the amateur team thrashes the team 9-1 talk to me about the noise in the stadium everyone in the stadium will be giving this team a standing ovation everyone in the stadium will be applauding this amateur team that had that has enabled, has put down the strong team and what happens is that fa ulqi as-sahara tusajidin not only the supporters we are taken by storm but even the magicians on the playground on the show ground were taken by storm fa ulqi as-sahara tusajidin they fell down in prostration because for them they knew whatever they had done was magic but whatever that has happened they know magic they know that is not magic am i clear now these magicians know magic and whatever has taken place here this is not magic fa ulqi as-sahara tusajidin this is far beyond magic this is something we need to follow so they fall down in prostration this is something magnificent that has happened in front of their eyes qalu amanna bi rabbil alamin we have believed in the lord of the world rabbi musa wa harun to be specific um, we are talking about the lord of musa the lord of harun who is broken again firaun is broken again now firaun is really really angry he is really angry so what he says amantum lahu qabla an adhana lakum you believed in him before i gave you permission did i give you permission to believe in him the pharaoh has been telling these people i am your lord and now these people are saying amanna bi rabbil alamin rabbi musa wa harun we have believed in the lord of the worlds the lord of musa the lord of harun whose permission did you get to believe in them did i give you permission you believed in him qabla an adhana lakum before i gave you permission i've realized one thing innahu lakabirukum alladhi 'allamakum as-sihr he is your master that taught all of you magic the magic the small small magic you came with he is the one who taught you he is kabirukum he is your big man who taught you magic 
ala saufa ta'lamun ataka timu genda chitegera how do you believe you never sold for my permission how do you how do you believe in him la saufa ta'lamun la uqatti'anna aydiyakum wa arjulakum min khilafin i am going to cut your arms and your feet min khilaf min khilaf was a kind of punishment that is given in a way that you lose ultimate balance forever they cut your right arm and your left foot you're done you will never balance in your life you see uh, when you are moving and your arms are spreading wide your arms are providing balance for you so when your right ha- hand goes forward your left leg also goes forward okay so the, the legs and arms are going to alternate when you're moving forward when this arm is up front this leg is also up front this one that is behind like that when someone cuts this right hand and the left leg there is no balance with you that is one of the punishments the pharaoh would give and that is a scary punishment that everyone was scared of and on top of that wala usallibannakum ajma'in i'm going to crucify all of you i'm going to make you lose balance but if you think you're losing balance with moving sorry i'm going to crucify all of you crucifixion you're not going to move okay you're going to die on a cross wala usallibannakum ajma'in qalu la dhayf no problem No problem. Do whatever you want to do. Inna ila rabbina munqalibun. We are returning to who? To our Lord. If you kill us, we are returning to who? How? It it means these people, these people's hearts have been always yearning for something specific, something true for them to believe in. And when Musa alayhi salam came with this, they are so convinced that they even thinking of who meeting allah how does someone turn from a magician to someone who is expecting to meet allah and that happens in a split second with the power of allah from being a magician working against allah to hoping to meet who to meet allah and when you get that purpose when you get the purpose of meeting allah nothing can stand in your way to scare you not even death should i repeat that when you get purpose in your life nothing can scare you not even death and why doesn't even death scare you because your purpose is to attain divine pleasure the pleasure of allah that even death is not going to scare you because guess what even when they kill you they're helping you go close to who to allah isn't that a purpose that you would wish for that is the case so even th- these people they have attained a purpose that even the threats of the pharaoh are not scaring them inna ila rabbina munqalibun we are going to meet our lord inna natuma we are yearning so deeply yearning ayaghfir lana rabban rabbuna khatayana we are so hopeful we are so yearning for the forgiveness of our lord an kunna awwal al mu'minin if we are the first believers wajabot wa dhti wa chaman if you kill us and we have become the first believers that is an honor please do as you wish so the end game was they were killed and crucified musa the musa alayhi salam has made his dawa and all these magicians have been crucified they have been cut uh, their limbs alternatingly and musa is not touched there is something between the pharaoh and musa that is not explained You can't explain you can't explain that thing between Musa and and the Pharaoh. Even the Pharaoh can't help himself. He kills all the magicians. But he doesn't touch who? Musa. Oh, Allah told Musa, "Wa alqaytu alayka mahabbatan minni." A special kind of love was endowed upon you 
that even when this man wants to kill you so bad, he can't kill you. And that is something that is a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa. Because when you read about the Pharaoh, Musa would be dead by now. And you can't imagine how is Musa surviving all this long. It was some kind of magic, some, some kind of feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put between him and Musa that he couldn't contain. And he's not going to touch Musa. He doesn't touch Musa. Musa leaves the show ground and he goes away, untouched. And guess who are convinced with the religion of Musa? Who is convinced? The children of Israel. The children of Israel, remember they said, they were going to follow the magicians if they turned out to be the winners. Have the magicians won? No, it was Musa who won. Nevertheless, the magicians have followed who? Have followed Musa. And the Banu Israel have no reason now except to follow who? To follow Musa. So the next bit, Musa alayhi salam has conquered the kingdom of the Pharaoh. Was that his mission? Did he come to conquer the kingdom of the Pharaoh? His mission was an arsil ma'ana bani Israel, taking back the children of Israel from this slavery to go back to the land they were promised. Now you've had the word promised land. So Musa was going to get the children of Israel from Egypt and he was going to take them back to freedom, back to Palestine, back to Asham where they had their freedom before them coming to, to Egypt. Now that is the next task Musa is going to do. Musa has won the attention of the Pharaoh, has won the attention of the ministers of the Pharaoh, has won the attention of everyone in Egypt. Now he has another task, taking the children of Israel away from Egypt back to the promised land. How is he going to do that? Is, is that going to be as easy as coming to the Pharaoh and talk at him? It's not as easy as that. I don't know how he's going to do that. But we shall wait and see what Allah tells us about what happened. And that is going to be tomorrow. Bi'awnihi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.